Hello folks and welcome to Something for the Weekend. It's me, Cathy Griffith. Me, Fiona Scott. Me, Alice Butcher. And me, Stephen Day. Hi all. So... <laughs> Hello everybody. Hello. We've... <laughs> We've had so much fun bringing you Wednesdays in this week's Open Times that we decided to keep the banter going and do it all over again on a Friday. So here we are. I'm pacing up and up, up outside <laughs> Balvica stores on seal because this is the best place I can get a signal. I think Fiona's snug at home in Bendelock and Ellis, you're still lurking beneath McCaig's tower, are you? I'm very much in lurking mode. <laughs> lurking mode. <laughs> Are you still in your pajamas? <laughs> I've got a lovely <laughs> waistcoat on and a nice Scottish looking shirt. Thank you very yeah, much. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure. So, oh, e- Alice, Alice is not lurking in his pajamas. Just let us make that clear. A tartan uh, shirt. A tartan <laughs> shirt. I, and, I uh, thought I would mention I'm, I'm still lurking in the office while you guys are all outside. <laughs> oh, <laughs> You're not bitter or anything. Not no. bitter at all. <laughs> The idea is oh, you'll get back in touch and let us know what you've got planned too. So I've started doing this couch to kilometers thing. It's an app, I'm told, by my youngest daughter who's living down in Bournemouth. And it's our way of trying to connect over the miles and do something together. So the idea is she gets it on a phone. I'm on the phone to her and she hands out instructions as we're supposed to walk for a little bit and then break into a run. Now, she thinks I'm running, but actually, I would call it more of a slow trot. There's, there's not much of a sweat breaking out, I can tell you. But it's a really nice thing for us to do together, so we're going to keep that going. Um, when we're not doing that, um, part of my exercise, I'm hoping to get out and do my swims as well. So I'm still braving the, uh, the, the chilly waters. Um, and also, Saturday night, is pizza night here on Steel. We've got a lovely lady called Holly Wesley who's got a wood-fired oven up at um, Arden Capel, and she started doing pizza delivery. We have something in the OT this week about it. Uh, so lots of gorgeous um, options on the menu there. Took me ages to decide, and everything from like olives and capers and lemon and garlic and pepperoni. And my mate, he's just gone for margarita. How boring is that? But anyway, we all have our own tastes, don't we? So, you just yeah. made me starving now. <laughs> Thanks for that, Cathy. <laughs> <laughs> mouth watering i know i've been trying to really be really good and eat healthy but you know what when pizza's on the menu it's going to be the pizza isn't it i hope there's loads of cheese on it as well Mm-mm-mm. oh well <laughs> i was i was actually going to try some haute cuisine this weekend haute thought, cuisine haute How cuisine haute? well i thought about taking a tin of beans out the cupboard putting it in the microwave and making <gasps> them hot making them hot <laughs> 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 that, 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 that sounds quite hooped. That could catch on. Hooped cuisine. Yeah, maybe we could get inventive and just like encourage each other with recipes and things that we find from the cupboard. Well, you say that next in next week's open times, we're starting a brand new um, cookery feature, uh, which will have weekly recipes for people that. I've got all these weird ingredients in their cupboards because it's the only thing they can find in Tesco. So we thought we'd uh, we'd try and think of ways to make new new meal options. Is that all of the supermarkets are available? Do we need to, <laughs> do we, do we need to say that as well? <laughs> I, I just saw it on the BBC the other day. <laughs> I've just I I couldn't find any pasta because usually I eat white pasta. And I, I thought, oh, God, I'm going to have to get wholemeal brown pasta. I thought, I'm going to really dislike this. And do you know what? I absolutely love it now. And I thought, if it hadn't it. been if it hadn't been for this, I would never have tried it because I would have always thought that I wouldn't like it. But it's been yummy. Do you know what Ooh. I've got in the cupboard? Talking of pasta, it's this little jar of pink beetroot pesto. Yeah. <laughs> Beetroot yeah. pesto. That's yeah, it. I, I think yeah, we're going to end up eating stuff that we've pesto. never eaten before. What was that, Stevie? <laughs> I think I found my limit with the beetroot. <laughs> <laughs> that's where you draw the line. That's it. it. That's it. No more. If I don't do any, if I don't get myself out shopping this weekend, I'm going to be eating the grass in the garden. I think. <laughs> well, do you know? I read. This is interesting. This is interesting because I've been trying to sort of read about you know eating healthy and all the vitamins and things. 
apparently there's like I can't remember 10 or maybe even 14 times more vitamins in dandelion leaves than spinach there you go folks <laughs> so get that's out what there. i'm doing this weekend <laughs> Kathy, I was going to invite you to send some recipes into the cookery feature, but uh, I noticed on WhatsApp this week that you'd actually, in the space of a week, managed to burn an egg and then burn your lentil soup. So you're, <laughs> you're now banned. It's, it's been a disappointing week. It's not quite wise. Delia Smith, is it? Yeah. Do, do you have any pans left in your house? <laughs> I've got the eggs on to boil. And then I couldn't get a signal to ring you folks and other people. So I went out into the garden to try and call people. Still couldn't get a signal. So then sort of took myself further down and remembered eggs. Got home and it was just like shattered eggs. All Extraordinary. All those units, things <laughs> exploded. Uh, and then yesterday's lentils, yesterday's lentils worked like the onions and a bit to saute and then melt the burn. I took the soup, putting in extra curry powder to try and disguise the burn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so apart from uh, burning, egg, burning eggs dry. and lentils, what, what else are you up to this weekend? <laughs> well, I, think that's, I think that's the thing I've said enough. I think we'd better hear what you lot have got planned. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, actually, I yeah, I, I'm going to a world premiere at the theatre tonight. Uh, to, wow. Yes, I, after my haute cuisine. I'm I'm going to watch John Finnamore's play Penguin Diplomacy, which uh, I believe Stevie you were involved in that. We have a lovely world premiere tonight. Uh, the first time that this play has been on the the small screen, and uh, that's at eight o'clock tonight. And you can see it at www.opentimes.co.uk forward slash penguin. Would you like to hear a little interview with the cast? Oh yes, please. Yeah. Why not? Um, I am Sophie Caruana. And I am Mike Rowell. And we are performing in the Penguin Diplomacy. I thought you were going to say right. that with me then. No. It is written by John Finnamore. Yes. And we should have been performing this in the Drama Festival 2020 at the Corrin Halls. But because of coronavirus, we are now filming it in the Drama Hut in Benderlock. And for one night only, we will be streaming it online, so if you're lucky enough, you can get to watch it. And who do you play, Mike? I play Sundergaard, who is Danish. He's Danish. And what does he have that's special? He's got a lovely special hat. He has a special hat. And stew. And stew Chews. and soup. And Chews. pants washing. Yes. Ask me who I'm playing. You? How are you playing? <laughs> who are you playing? I'm playing Jane Bunning, who is a British diplomat. Um, so they couldn't be more different. That's right. So we hope you enjoy the show. Get online and watch it. So are you all going to tune in tonight, guys, at 8 o'clock at www.opentimes.co.uk slash penguin? Try and stop me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would if I could get myself to open. <laughs> you can watch Penguin Diplomacy by going to www.opentimes.co.uk forward slash penguin. Marvellous. We'll all be Can there. Can I talk now? No. <laughs> I, I was going to say, oh. I, after that, I'm having a family quiz night, which my nephew down in the borders is organising for us all. So there's about five of us joining, joining in with that. And me and uh, my husband, Malcolm, are going to be the only ones from up in Oban on it. So you looking forward to that, Malcolm? Welcome. You know what? I thought he was going to say no. <laughs> Ma Malcolm, has got e Malcolm has got earphones on and he's watching bowls in Australia. Uh, recorded bowling, but bowling is, I think he's missing the greens because uh, we're, we're not going to get on them for a while. So, so that's that. And tomorrow night, I'm off to a, a wee Cayley. Uh, Martin oh, McLeod of Carper Cayley. Oh, <laughs> Martin McLeod of Capper Cayley fame and his son Martin Jr. of Martin McLeod Films uh, have set up an innovative way of bringing together musicians from all over the world to play together on the Facebook page Tunes in the House. So we're going to have a listen to that on Saturday night, roll the rags back and have a wee jig. Uh, one of the latest episodes features Oban accordionist Don Donnie McCorkadale 
and local keyboard player Claire Jordan. So, so everybody's getting involved with that. Uh, so that's that's something I'm looking forward to. Alice, do you fancy coming to Michaeli? It sounds like everyone can. It sounds like the world can come to these things, can't it? I think oh, all welcome. You know, it's really opened the international doors to these things. My worry is that we're all going to get too used to just doing everything online. I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a Luddite, really, at heart. I'm a big radio man. I like listening to the radio. I always have done. And I've really got into the radio during the lockdown. It's just there's something kind of reassuring about having that uh, (laughs) voice in the room uh, with me. Because people won't know, but I've only just moved up to this area about a week before the the kind of the the gates were locked. Um, So there's all these fantastic places that I can see from my window that I can't actually visit. Um, So what I've been doing uh, to pass the time as well as working very hard for the open times, of course, is um, taking a lot of photographs from where I am. So I'm a big, you know, I'm not a brilliant photographer, but, you know, passable. So, um, you know, there's some more snow on the top of Mole this morning. So I'm going to try and get that in a nice light. Um, And do quite a lot of reading as well. And, um, yeah, I'll just be hanging out and kind of sort of, you know, doing a bit of cooking, catching up on a few jobs. I've got some posts that's arrived that's in quarantine for 24 hours. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I've been really looking forward. So it'll be like Christmas Day, you know, honestly, on Saturday morning. Alice, <laughs> Alice could you amuse, me? you amuse yourself by trying to pick it up with your elbows and then taking it, dropping I... it, and then just like a bit of a... Well, it would be exercise as well, wouldn't it? You know, that, that's the way I would look at it, absolutely. It would be. I could just sort of move my room around uh, and things like that. You nice. know, and, and there you go. I, I'm living with um, with um, with two very, very nice women at the minute. And um, <laughs> they, they've, they've got me, they've installed me as the bin man for the house. That's That's my job. As long as I've got all the bins sorted out, I've got a happy house. So I'll have to make sure that I get around to doing the bins this weekend. Although for how much longer, I don't know, because when are the council going to come and pick them up? It's the multi-million dollar question that everyone in Albany is asking. Well, I I think the general waste still every every three weeks, as it was. That's what we've been told. So fingers crossed. uh, Sorry to add a rubbish note there, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) Stevie, we've all been talking about exercises. Have you been have you been exercising yeah. at all? Uh, yeah, I have for my sins. Now, lots of people have probably heard of Joe Wicks, the body coach, because he's doing PE with the nation's kids. Well, he started with the nation's kids. It seems to have gone worldwide. At one point, he had 800,000 viewers on his YouTube live channel. So for my sins, my 14-year-old dragged me in to doing this half-hour workout. Now... I have to say this is aimed at kids and it (laughs) floors me at the end of the first one I could barely breathe my wife walked into the room and looked at me and was genuinely worried (laughs) (laughs) this this, this is designed for the air ambulance to Stevie air ambulance to Stevie (laughs) it's it's designed for kids but I mean he's really good you know you do you know, 30 seconds of one exercise and then you have a break for 30 seconds then you do 30 seconds of another but it's quite it's quite tough now I'm coming up for 50 these kids I used to think I was quite young anyway if anybody wants to do a good workout his all his recordings are there from the last nine workouts in fact 10 including today so I challenge you three to have a wee go at that over the weekend I certainly will be catching up with the 10 days well Stevie to, to be honest and this might uh, this might be a good suggestion for you if you're struggling with Joe I've been doing uh, Diana Moran the green goddess in the morning oh, I, <laughs> <laughs> I love it I love it they've, they've yeah, pulled, her, pull, pulled her out of uh, retirement dusted the cobwebs off and there she is on her screens once again every morning yeah, well, and you, and you can a, do it from your chair generous. maybe I should be trying <laughs> I'll that tell you, what the routine, tell you what the routine is she said 
pick the coffee up from the chair of your arm with your right hand, raise it, hold it, count to five, down, move it to the side. Now with your left arm, pick up your coffee cup, raise, five seconds, and down. That's it for today, everybody. We, well we done. Just need a, we just need a That's whiskey it. version of that, really, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> that's Red my one. that's my I'm kind of exercise. Raise, raise your tumbler. Exactly. Never mind, Joe. <laughs> so we've been set a challenge by Stevie and have we to to if I manage to watch Joe Wicks doing it, that will be an achievement. No, 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 no. The, 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 the achievement is to do one of them. I'm not asking you to do ten of them. Just do what? one of them and let me know. Okay. Thirty minutes exercise. Thirty minutes exercise. It's nothing. It's easy. Right. Yeah. Right, we'll do, we'll do that, and busy, then okay, we can we can discuss that on on next week's show. That'll be interesting. <laughs> if we've got the energy left. <laughs> now we're talking about something for the weekend, which is great. But yeah. does anyone realise that the Easter holidays for the kids starts today too? Never. Yeah. So two <gasps> weeks of them being Easter at home. Eggs? It does mean <laughs> Easter eggs. But it also means Yay! board games. Uh, so, you know, Monopoly, Cluedo, which is more survivable people. Twister, mm. Twister. Depends who you play. Twister would be breaking some kind of two metre social distance in real, wouldn't it? But I suppose if it's your own oh, household, yeah. you'd be all right. Yeah. Mm. At the Open Times, we're passionate about our community and want to help out in any way we can. So if you've got good ideas for something for the weekend, why not email us at editor at opentimes.co.uk, give us a ring on 01631 568000, or Facebook us and leave us an instant message. I've been Stephen Day, you've been listening to Fiona Scott, Cathy Griffiths and Ellis Butcher. We'll see you next week for something else for the weekend. <laughs>